recording is on. This is the Fellowship of the Link call for Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. Last day in May. Soon we start June. Kind of crazy. Indeed. Yes. Hello. Okay. So I couldn't hear you earlier. Now I can. Good. I figured you dropped off for some reason. Yes. Um, Bentley, how are you doing? Good. You're not coming in very loud. Am I not? Yeah, now you are. Mike, let me no, check weird. my settings. No, now you're fine. You're setting uh, that first thing you said. Mm -hmm. It sounded like you were far from the mic, and all of a sudden you're crisp and clean. Okay. Or five by five, as they say in radio. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been playing around a lot in Massive Wiki, uh, so that's, and then not working on my video series um, about debate. So ah. that's the progress report. I'm playing around with hobbies instead of doing what I need to do. Although in, the, in fellowship of the link news, um, uh, I uh, on Massive Wiki, I, I made one of those useless uh, uh, force directed graph charts of the whole site. So um, that's kind of that's linkish, right? That sounds cool. Yes. How'd that work out? Do you have it handy? Yeah. Let me let me pull it up. Um, And I'm, I would also love to get a just a, a little landscape description of where you guys are working on uh, on massive. Hey, Chris. Now I'm I'm waiting for Chris to have his usual technical hiccups with camera and microphone or something like that. We don't hear you yet, for what it's worth. That's because I'm on. Oh, there yeah, we go. Now okay. we hear you. We should have a progress bar, like user said. It's like, uh, you join, what is your confidence it will work? <laughs> I think we're going to, yeah. Exactly. And sorry, Bentley was looking for a, a document to share with us. For, I'm, I'm filling time for that. There we go. Yeah, <clears throat> there we go. So, <clears throat> you know, so this is the, the site. Um, so this is... Hey, Pete. It's the... Hey, Pete. I was just showing him the... I was yeah, playing with so the massive wiki site, um, and then I was just showing them this useless kind of diagram. You can hover over these and see that you so actually that's Jerry right there, Jerry McCall's. Oh my god, dot HTML. I, mean, um, I don't have the title. Useless diagram, I like it. Yeah, and so I can drag Jerry around. Ah, oh, ah, Ooh, ow. <laughs> <laughs> but it shows you know in Jerry's brain, these are the different things it goes out to, um, like your now page. Which that's probably all hard to see because this is very small. But um, that's yeah, that's um, yes. I was just working on taking a massive wiki and pulling out all the metadata, and then this is just one of the things I knew I could just play around to show what's going on. And, um, and that's yeah. on that's on Netlify. So is that actually visible outside, or is that yeah. just internal experiment? Yeah. So you could pull that up. Oh, cool. On my auto deploy, it may disappear at some point. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's kind of fellowship of the linky. Thank you. It's pretty cool. Very yeah, yeah. So. Hey, Were you I, saying I, that that um, Bentley that that's accessible to to uh, outsiders? To it's to uh, it's open. It's Marvel. in the it's on the internet. Okay. Can you share that link in our chat? Yeah, it, yeah. not necessarily Thanks. persistent. Yeah, it may not be there tomorrow, but it's there now. Here right now, and, and the other cool thing, I just to reiterate, um, even though it looks the same as a regular massive wiki, it's actually built by with different, completely different code. Ooh. Yeah, it's using a 11D mostly, and then I rewrote mm. some of it. But I'm going to pull it outside of 11D. Um, so Pete and I have competing massive wiki builders, competition. <laughs> so Jerry was asked what we we're doing in massive wiki, and so we're we're doing that. Um, but, and then we're kind of working on standards, which is a good way to do it. We can both play around and then, um, yeah. And I guess one other kind of neat thing about that is, um, on the pages, I'm also, so I have this metadata, like here's the getting started page. Uh, Pete always had it to where you can go just put dot MD at the end of it and it'll show the markdown page. Um, but 
what I what I was doing also based on that same philosophy was there's now a .json so you can see all the metadata about the page. Um, so it makes it really easy for other people to use the information in the site without having to ask permission. And Perfect. somewhere in here, there's even a, an index of all the pages, but I can't remember what I called it at the moment. So <laughs> I will want links to that. I mean, hopefully when you go to this page, there'll be a little link that says, see the markdown for this page, see the JSON, see the metadata for this page in JSON format. Um, um, see this see this page and then get repo. Um, yeah, right. For what it's worth, uh, Bentley, I, uh, mess, uh, Python, MWB generates a JSON file that's a representation of the YAML front matter. OK. And is that stored next to the file? Yeah, yeah. As, a, as a .json? Yeah. OK, so yeah, mine's that just plus a little bit extra. Yeah, I like the idea of extra. Um, Bentley, thank you for showing us this. And I, I kind of was interested in checking in with both of you guys about where what are you working on? What's hot on Massive Wiki? Uh, and what are you what are you adding? What do you, do you like? Um, uh, the, I, I think the big thing is um, what's massive kind of the wiki on culture? massive wiki is the way I should have asked it. Sorry. What's that? What's massive on massive wiki? That's how I that's how I should have phrased um, it. Uh, a, a big part of it is working on on wiki culture um, and trying to figure out different patterns for working collaboratively. Um, uh, another thing is trying to make it so Git is not quite such a a, a pain. Um, and I've I've had a number of discussions, and including today on Massive Wiki Wednesday about um, uh, about Git and you know what do we want to use it? How would we use it? How would we wrapper it to make it more sane for most people? All that kind of stuff. It's an interesting kind of line of inquiry. And and I guess one of the one of the things for me, and I Bentley ended up thinking of this a little bit differently, but one of the things for me is that um, for for very small group collaboration on a wiki, something like a wiki, uh, real-time collaborative editing, uh, like you have in HackMD or Etherpad, is good enough. Actually, that's what you would want. Um, so you wouldn't even want this whole Git thing going on in the background. You just want all the pages to be live. And that would be great um, for most people, maybe, or for many people, for, for wiki heads, I think. Maybe maybe some people would find that extremely confusing. Um, separately, there's another modality where I, I value the, and maybe maybe Bentley does too, We but we ended up thinking of different protocols underneath it. But I value <clears throat> the affordances that Git and the Git Forge together, it's both of them, have for larger scale collaboration. So branching and forking and pull requests and um, conversation based around um, commits and uh, file changes, line, line by line file changes and things like that. So that's something that it's hard to kind of convey that to other people, but watching a software team uh, do all of that stuff, um, just manage you know, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of lines of, of code and kind of stitching them all together in like massive branch trees and stuff like that. Um, now it sounds really scary, but watching a software team do that, it actually goes a lot more smoothly than you would think. Um, and it, it manages the complexity of massively changing things iteratively in, in different, you know, different ways. And especially being able to do fine grain um, acceptances um, or rejections or comments um, on individual lines and individual branches um, is, is just like mind-blowingly cool and, and amazingly productive and, and lets you, you know, stitch together a team of people doing work um, uh, in a way that, you know, it, most most times you can't. So um, so I was using the, the example of, you know, maybe you're writing a constitution with a thousand or 10,000 of your closest friends. Um, uh, Bill Anderson said, or the uh, IPCC um, report, which needs to be continuously updated um, and is huge and has lots of moving parts, you know. So that's a, a, a case where you want the affordances that Git and, and Git 
forges have, um, I think, uh, as opposed to small group collaboration where, you know, writing blog posts and talking about philosophy or something like that. So I, I, I value both of those. And maybe even things in between where there's the standard kind of draft and publish and maybe or maybe not yeah. with approvers, more of a SharePoint flow yeah. or <clears throat> yeah, enabling all those different modalities. Um, I, I said Bentley had maybe a different, a little bit different take. He said, you know, Pete, you could actually do the same thing with CRDT, CRDT trees underneath it rather than Git trees underneath it. And that makes sense and, and might be a nice bridge from character level changes um if you could figure out a way to bundle and branch and you know do merges and 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 rejects and things like that in crdt natively rather than in git that might be a, a, a wonderful thing yeah and that that would take a lot more kind of exploration it's a not as tried path as git so that'd be a far future possibility but it would solve some of the problems in, in Git where you're making changes. And because it doesn't know the intent of the changes, it's comparing two endpoint files. It has to make some guesses that would be more explicit if you had something like CRDT that knows the, the changes and the, and the flow of the information. But that's pretty far down the path. That, that reminds me right into that. Um, I saw recently a... Um peritext um it's a very simple application of of leveling up crdt a little bit so um what peritext does is it understands the intent of formatting um so they're doing rich text crdt rather than plain text crdt with in in markdown or something like that and it's a good a good simple ish uh, example of leveling up the semantic understanding of where you're doing the the change management you know um yeah minter does is, i get a 50 502 that sucks yeah me too i just just checking in i have paratex under <clears throat> next to it um we don't have any overlaps with ink and switch do we <clears throat> it feels to me like ink and switch is a community we should be reaching into You're muted, Jerry, if you're saying something. Oh, crap. I thought I'd unmuted myself. Um, uh, thank you for the, the update. I appreciate that. Uh, anyone else with updates that are fellowshipy? I have an agenda item, although I probably won't be here to discuss it. As I, I still I can't think through the actual use case or the steps that someone would do. Like, I guess I know the use case, but I don't know kind of like the steps that we would like to see in an ideal system where we're actually sharing data. Like there are times, I mean, I guess I want the options to say, oh, I want to transclude, I want to include their live data. I want to copy it and I want to copy it and make changes. I want to both copy it and link to it. I just like, we've kind of talked about this, but I keep thinking like, if I'm going to use, and how do I want to browse their data? It'd be almost nice to walk through, you know, I have a massive wiki and I want to, and I see this great thing in Agora, what would be my ideal workflow to join those two things? And I can't even picture it in my head. So, cause when I was trying to figure out the, the next version of massive wiki, the whole reason we're doing massive wiki and markdown pages. Is so it's easy to share and replicate. And I'm like, well, I don't know how we're going to do that. So glad you asked. Uh, Flanton, do you, do you want got, to take a swing? Yeah. I mean, I how about carpet for you? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I mean, I've been thinking all the same things and like, you know, uh, it seems like we have a, you know, we haven't discussed all this really like uh, compatibilities. Uh, at the data level, uh, formal level, and you know, like uh, you know, the repository, being that we are all based on Git, or we are we are, we are we have been converging towards Git as the, I guess, medium for exchange. And um, so, as, as you know, of course, the Agora as it is now has this transcription support, 
it doesn't have like copy uh, copy and link or like uh, uh, explicitly in our server, but uh, it has two components. This is my, my I'll, I'll just tell you like what I've been playing with. I don't know whether it fits with what Massive Wiki will implement, but you know. So essentially, um, the Agora has two components. Agora server is uh, um, supports transclusion. And of course, like it's also the, uh, the main goal it has is render the data it knows about. So the data is, that is on disk. And it doesn't care about how the data gets there, essentially. Pretty much, whatever you dump in like a bunch of in a directory, it will try to render whatever it supports. And if the content has these hints that say transclude this URL, uh, it will actually just transclude using iframes, as simple as that. So that I think will I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that for Massive Wiki that will be very easy to implement. It's just a matter of saying like having a pre um, you know. Like a filter or like a preprocessor that says uh, maybe there's like a, a class of links. The Agora does two things. Uh, it has an allow list which says if something says wiki in the URL, we're just gonna assume it can be transcluded. And actually, that works very often because wikis tend to be like uh, transclude friendly, uh, thankfully. And it has a few other things. Like if, if it has a cop in the name, it also tries to transclude. And I'm constantly surprised at how well this works. In essence, uh, everything but the corporate internet, which is, well, a big chunk of the internet, uh, tends to be transclude friendly, thankfully. Um, so it does that. The other thing you can do is like, um, I think we discussed some point like pull, push, go, all these proposed extensions to Markdown uh, to some extent, this Agora protocol level things. Uh, we could agree on you know, some hints, a hashtag, uh, you know, convention, or whatever you want to pass. So we. But if that is next to a link, uh, maybe Massive Wiki can also assume the Agora does that that is meant to be transcluded. And then it just replaces, it, it just inserts an iframe after the link. This is what the Agora does. Uh, you can see it you know, all around. Um, there's the other component, which is the copying that you mentioned, Benly, that is very, it's very uh, interesting, right? Because, and this, uh, so Adam is not here, but I know she, he did some uh, work on archiving like things like uh, social streams and so on. And I know there's lots of work here. So the other component of the Agora is what does something close to this. It's not done by Agora server. Uh, it's called Agora Bridge, which can actually, I think Agora Bridge may be reusable by Massive Wiki as is, because Agora Bridge is just a suite of importers where you can say, like, these are the sources I want to import or the resources, and it will just essentially crawl like clone whatever the protocol it supports is and just dump it to disk and once it's dumped to disk i mean really it can be used by agora server as an agora source or it can be used by massive wiki as a, as a massive wiki uh, so i think there it, that could be an, a, a nice place for collaboration uh, for collaboration so in short i see two ways of collaborating one on the conventions and how we you know users can hint for things like transclusion and the other on the, on the importer into the commons aspect. Uh, and both are, um, you know, uh, I think relatively simple to implement. Uh, that's one thing. On the other, <laughs> and I'll shut up after this. Uh, I also share this uh, OGM Agora I started setting up. Uh, this is just a repo. Uh, I, well, I was uh, sick and busy, so I, uh, like I didn't uh, actually set up the, the machine Agora uh, yet, but it will be quite easy. If you take a look at this, so this is one way, I don't know if Massive Wiki supports this composition of wikis, uh, uh, Pete, now, but the idea here will be essentially, an Agora is a composition of wikis and gardens. So uh, I seeded uh, this uh, Agora with Relate, OJ, Massive Wiki, and My Garden. Uh, and, you know, essentially we can list an, uh, any sources. We can just keep listing more sources here. And this Agora will just pull them out, pull them all and like <laughs> squash them together, essentially. So that will be a, a way of playing together uh, in the shared space. Yeah, I started implementing multiple unrelated sources and... Mm. Um, and my massive wiki builder. So that's interesting. Nice. So Ed, do you, but do you also have any thoughts on like the the flow of someone 
finding and incorporating? Is it like, oh, I go to this website, here's a page I like, I then go and edit my sources document is kind of the flow right now. Right, to, to yes. To right now, the interface is this YAML file. I will, I will bridge and server actually really uh, use the same thing, but mostly bridge to import, yes. Uh, we had like an experimental flow using um, Git, Gitty, which has a very nice API. So we thought at some point of moving the source of truth for repositories to Gitty, because then you get like a built-in API that is pretty rich to say add repo. And then you can say like every repo that is mirroring this Gitty instance can be imported. So maybe we could reuse some of the shelf tools. Uh, but yes, for now it's only YAML. Do you have in your thing a concept of a transclusion markdown? Um, what's it called when you have a special yeah, set yeah. of characters <laughs> format? I would say syntax. Syntax, right. Yeah, um, so, yeah. Right. Uh, Obsidian uses um, bang double square brackets. And that bang is the, the same way that you embed a, an image. So it's really. Oh, um, so you could then have it point to an HTML file and it would uh, you, be. You, uh, in fluid. Obsidian, you point it to a, a wiki page. A bang double to a wiki page yeah so, so okay, double square so brackets means... is a link um <laughs> yeah just like uh and, and well uh when you put a bang in front of um an external link it it makes it um an embed i don't know if it actually does that with html but it does that with images so yeah, then it's true. obvious to, to put bang double square brackets means take another page bang. in this wiki and transcode it yeah, and I think they all even support uh, transcluding specific headers, no? As a sub content. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, the hash. Yeah, the hash rank. Yeah. Oh, actually, just major mark. Um, it's funny, I put my hand up earlier, and I think I made a little noise here, and it takes your hand down as soon as you make any kind of noise. So I look up, and I'm like, oh, hand's gone. Um, I wanted to, to answer your question, Bentley, um, uh, and I'm not sure I followed everything Flunted said, because I am not that technical. Um, but I just wanted to come in with more of a use case. Uh, and I think I think this is territory we've sort of covered before, but but I'd love to sort of make it better so that it works for you and sticks for us. Uh, so I, and I, two examples come to mind. One of them is Nikola Tesla just as an entity. Uh, and the other one is homelessness in Portland, which I'm trying to get involved in in some sense. And for both of these, there are resources that are available. And uh, so Nikola Tesla has a Wikipedia page, awesome. But I have him in my brain in context, in a particular context. And I'm interested in the use case of me elaborating some context and vision for what Nikola Tesla is that other people can see as I see it, or also that they can take any node that I've dropped in because in principle, these nodes are markdown files uh, and are reusable in, in some reusable format so that someone could enhance any of the nodes and like add metadata, add actual data, add narrative, make new connections to other nodes, other sorts of things. And then when I come back and revisit Nikola Tesla, for example, um, that, that area would be enriched for me and I could either decide to accept and include the other people's and, and maybe by contributor, um, other people's contributions to improve that node or not. Um, and so for Portland homelessness, I'm trying to build some resources around, hey, what are Portland civic organizations? Then there's a, a bunch of organizations, some fuzzy, some less fuzzy, uh, that have different kinds of mandates, uh, some of them more conservative, some of them more progressive, blah, blah, blah. I think that having a, a list of these would be interesting. And wouldn't it be cool if that list could be used as a uh, database and search thing, sort of like Catalyst? And, and so maybe what I'm talking about is a little bit flotilla-ish, but I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm trying to figure out how do we how do we do our jam with the tool we love best, whether it's Agora or the Brain or Massive or something else, or, oh. or or Factor. How do we do our jam with the tool we love best, but leave behind um, improved, more fertile data soil, metaphorically, for everybody else to use? I, I think that's the simplest. Uh, I think that's the simplest way yeah. I can express it. It's like it's like we are never. And I, I, I wouldn't want to try to force everybody to use a tool or even a really sophisticated Swiss Army knife kind of tool. I don't think that's ever going to work. 
Um, but I do think that we can find some kind of wiki etiquette, um, wiki like community etiquette for the collaborations. And also with the elaboration of, hey, a link isn't just a link. There's a variety of forms of inclusion by reference, inclusion by value, transclusion, and other sorts of things that I don't, that are beyond my pay grade, but I'm really curious about because like, I'm like, what does the interface look like that simplifies that? So that when some things are bound together in some way, we know that all changes will dominate across all copies or they have to be approved in, in other copies or a lot, you know, whatever it might be, or, or multiple people can live edit this particular page because it's in, you're in a tool that supports that kind of live edit context in CRDT or otherwise, or this record is locked. You shouldn't touch it until somebody releases it because they're off somewhere doing it. And everything I've just said makes things a lot more complicated. Um, but everything I just said is might be necessary for the level of collaboration I'm looking for, because the, the end goal that I'm looking for is making progress on frickin' homelessness in Portland and homelessness in general, so that the things we discover are working someplace are shareable easily to other communities who can then appropriate parts of it that they would like, and then go build out other stuff that they discover and they want to do on their own. So that so my use case is any any domain of human knowledge. How do we use different tools uh, as power tools for their power and, and uniqueness? How do we share data without losing, without having to fall to the lowest common denominator and thereby losing what makes, makes each tool special, um, which means just the preservation of overlapping and extraneous metadata probably for different tools uh, that work. That's completely, that's, that's Precisely the question, yes, Jerry is saying, I mean, I just completely empathize with the, that being the key question here. My hunch is that if we need to solve it at the text level, and this is why like agreeing on the lingua franca to some extent, and then maybe building the tools based on that uh, base layer of, uh, of lingua franca and repository format or something uh, is what is most likely to work. So, you know, I, I can imagine, you know, and this is where like, I mean, I call the graph or a protocol because I call everything I want in some sense, but you know, like the idea will be, as this is the convention we say, if you have a source and a derivative, you know, a, you know, essentially a fork of that source, essentially you fork sort of like Federated Wiki, right? I think it's Federated Wiki, uh, which does have this, this core notion of like just uh, forking a page, right? The question is how do you contribute back? So to me, that seems like essentially like I think we discussed it at some point, like a special merge program that is, you know, uh, really almost at the, you know, base, uh, you know, human language level, which uh, allows you to like fork a page, contribute, and then send back a patch, you know, for review um, and simplify the process for, in particular, for less technical users, right? Uh, and that will be one more collaboration, right? It's it, it, still building on markdown uh, on git right on so th then it applies to massive wiki it applies to uh, what it applies to uh, to all these tools uh, so i think that's quite complicated but it seems also like something that we can agree you know to uh, like break down in pieces i don't know uh, what what do other people think yeah other thoughts i i i, I agree um I kind of wonder if the uh, old Atom or even microformats people played around with any. It, it, there's something that's kind of similar in there to a pingback. Yeah. Right. Um, and then I also like nowadays. Um, nowadays, you might want to look at operating or interoperating or 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 borrowing something from Sys Secure Scuttlebutt or Noster or Active. Right, right. um, so it feels like also we could build some bridges over to the indie web and Fediverse folks more than we are, because I think they're working on a bunch of the stuff from Activity Pub to to whatnot, trying to figure, trying to sort that out. Um, or at least learn from them or something like that. Yeah. I, I kind of wonder, I, I don't know the, the space very well, but I wonder there's a big difference between like, like thinking document changes and 
sending messages. Um, so I, I know Noster, for instance, is is very message oriented, and it's not you know something where you. And I, I kind of would presume ActivityPub is that way too. So so this is actually again I'm no inf I, I, I am a I A I'm not an information architect, um, but this is such an important issue because I was I was a big fan of General Magic way back in the day, and Pete, you and a couple others have probably heard me tell this story before, but General Magic managed to invent with brilliant people with good intentions, they managed to paint themselves into two very different corners. Andy Hertzfeld created Magic Cap, which was the user interface that didn't let users actually do very much at all. It was shockingly unuseful. And then Jim White, trying to make amends for X400, X500, invented Telescript, which was their message passing protocol. And everything about General Magic was message passing at the moment where the web shows up. <clears throat> and they are born and they hit the dust about a couple months later uh, with a too expensive device that really only does email that, that assumes a message passing infrastructure and can't understand other forms, can't, can't play nice with other forms of interaction like the web, which is then exploding. And it was really informative for me to see brilliant people um, write dead end software, architecturally dead end software. That was just like, wow. Um, and so, between open source dynamics to share and between standards and protocols to share, how do we create something that isn't a dead end, that isn't a roach motel like that, but rather um, takes us into this next layer of collaborations? Because that's our goal, right? Fellowship of the Link would like collaboration. Collaborate one, collaborate all. I can't do the hands in the middle thing. Well, and but the question too, though, is where does that coll collaboration occur? Because there's also kind of a, a new quirky split from a lot of these tools of, um, and even not, there's online, both personal and private, or multi audience space. And then there's all these note taking tools that are private, local only. But some people, I think, would not mind if their private local only had the ability to kind of break out and above but there's the the tooling and how it works for what can only i see ever what can small circles of friends see what can bigger groups see what can the larger public see or sub-publics and what does that architecture look like that's a really, you know, has always been a hard problem, you know, or if you do solve it, you know, like even a simple solution like Google Circles or Google Plus Circles was stupidly complex and, you know, maybe five of us ever used it because it was so hard. And even then there were people who had data leakages of, oh, I didn't want my stalker ex-boyfriend to see me and that data got out somehow. Yeah. I'm impressed at how little we all learned from Google Wave, Buzz, and Plus. Like, they came and went. Each of them was really exciting. They came and went way too quickly. Um, mm -hmm. A few things survived out of them, like Hangouts and so forth, uh, but very little. And, and, and there was no post-mortem. There was no, like, oh, man, this was so close. Uh, Wave, oh. Wave, I guess, was open sourced and surfaced somewhere else. I'm forgetting where. Apache. Yeah. Apache Foundation took it. Yes. There was a post-mortem uh, internally. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, but uh, not shareable, I think, uh, unfortunately. Uh, although a lot of people involved have the company, so maybe we should look. Yes. I mean, uh, <sighs> I have opinions, but yeah. I don't want oh, to... damn it. Sorry. Yeah. Because yeah. these things were really good. Yeah, Apache yeah. Apache Wave. I have it here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, I mean, a lot of the technology in Wave was like, uh, well, that was a technology in search of a product. Is this standard? Uh, I guess. Uh, but so was Lotus uh, Notes. Take exactly back in the day. And I think I think it, 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 yeah, the company didn't give it enough time. A lot of the technology that made it possible and that made it also uh, particularly uh, impressive back then has been integrated into the web. So to some extent, you know, um, you know, like Docs. 
uh, of course, it was an decision, but the docs and docs comments and so on, like replace a lot of the use cases that uh, were at least obvious for way back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Hmm. Different Those were also well. part of the, the, the web time and space where it was, let's move fast and break things. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, we'll just move on <clears throat> rather yeah. than let's move slowly and incrementally and let, you know, slowly fix things and actively make them better. Mm -hmm. um, with, you know, the scientific enterprise for the last 500 years essentially has, you know, let's make slow incremental progress and get somewhere. And, you know, suddenly we took a shift a decade ago and went against that general grain, which I think was a dramatic mistake. Mm -hmm. But maybe we can learn from uh, other entities' mistakes. Uh, and, you know, like, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, on the trust issue and, you know, the circus and so on, I think that that's, yeah, that seems open uh, still. Uh, my, I guess my, my hunch is that, I mean, okay, my, not my hunch, this is my maybe wishful thinking, is like, ignore the problem until it becomes like an actual problem, you know, like to some extent, uh, I mean, the way I, I think about the, this Agora level is, you know, an integration of relatively few and uh, like all the repositories and relatively few means less than a thousand or a hundred, I know, uh, which they all trust each other. So, to buy so the Agora will be, the Agora level will be currently the circle of trust. Uh, which is sort of like kicking the back, the can down the road, maybe. But then the the, 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 the plan will be at the Agora network level. So when you know when you Agora's network at that level, sort of like in the failures, uh, taking a cue from the failures at that level, you try, you try to uh, solve trust. Uh, which seems like I mean it's been sort of like proven, but doesn't exist currently. Um, I, I think that's a good way to think of it because it you can kick the can down the road and and get a lot done with the you know a lot yeah yeah and it's a, a genetic uh, a genetic approach let's see if you know you survive mm -hmm. long for that to be a problem yeah. but also to me okay so it, it also it reflects my ideology I guess but I I I like the idea of reclaiming this kind of space that the C two wiki I know and the wikis are are about which is like trust by default right. Yep. And, and see how far that gets you, uh, which tends to be further than anybody thinks, I think, usually. Um, and in particular, you know, the Agora, you know, it's so hard to add a repository, as, as Wendy, you know, it's like, we, you need to add a YAML, a YAML file. It's like, well, someone with access needs to do that. That seems strong enough for now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, you know, news we now how the OGM Agora, and I wanted to ask you if we want an OGM Agora. Or we want some other kind of agora. It's OGM because I was I, I looked uh, over the weekend. It's like oh we have Marley and we have all the and the fellowship. I also wanted to say like a fellow fellow link agora. But OGM seems to be the top level project. Is that true or? So there's a difference of approach between Pete and me here, where I think I think Pete really li likes to have lots of repos, lots of wikis, yeah. lots of separate things for each different project, and I, I and my. I, my brain does not transition between namespaces well at all. So I've yeah. kind of tried to gather things back yeah. into OGM. And, and Marley is one of those where we sort of just move things around in the directories a little bit, but right. made room for the Marley project, which is likely to be renamed real soon now. Um, uh, but, but yeah, I'm trying to make things as much as possible sort of fall under the OGM umbrella that are OGM-ish E. Um, and this right. is an open question. But are we finally implementing as OGM? Oh, yeah, Peter, Peter. So um, Jerry and I have a different, like a, a different, you know, uh, co cooperating, co competing view of it. I My view of, I think, I think you would want, maybe, let me try this on for size. Um, my <clears throat> my thinking is you want to uh, you would want to organize something like an agora. Maybe I don't even know what an agora really is, but you'd want to organize oh an goodness. information space around a governance um, uh, governance structure. Uh, so, um, and the governance structure might be really informal, um, or it might be more formal. So, Flotilla, for instance, is uh, an organization that has a governance structure. 
um, and it's very informal. Um, it's you know a few few of the original flotilla people kind of get together and talk about what what should happen without any you know without any proportional voting or anything like that. We're even really talking about who does what, but flotilla I would still say flotilla can make decisions for itself. Um, mm -hmm. uh, similarly, TFT Map has a pretty specific organization structure, and and, and you know it has the ability to make decisions. Um, and then you get bigger things than that. I don't know about Fellowship of the Link. Um, I don't know. I've, I don't feel like I've been here long enough, or maybe we haven't tried to make decisions. Um, uh, OGM is this I think really try. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Uh, OGM is this really special and wonderful beast, which, um, to to my mind, uh, and and largely thanks to Jerry, um, actively actively undermines the. Uh, or subverts, subverts the idea of an organization structure. Um, so it tries hard not to have an organization structure, um, uh, which means which means it's an awesome thing often, and and it's an organization that is different from any other organization I kind of know of because of that. It it continually tries to not decide things on behalf of OGM. Um, except once in a while, you know, Jerry will say, well, there, there shall be a domain name and this is what the domain name will be, or um, there shall be one, you know, OGM wiki. Um, uh, but in the main, it, it tends not to have a structure, but there are many people who participate in OGM in very fuzzy ways. And that doesn't add up to an organizational structure that can make des decisions on behalf of all of those people in the way right. that flotilla you know makes a decision or a tft map makes a decision right. um uh so the ogm wiki is kind of an it's an oddball to me um mm -hmm. uh, it's named ogm wiki and you know jerry said that thou, thou, thou shalt have a wiki um, which is wonderful um, most of OGM does not participate in the wiki. So is it really an OGM wiki if most of the community doesn't use it and doesn't care and doesn't even know about it? I don't know. For now, yeah. Yeah. Right. And, 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 yeah. and actually, there's yeah. for the for now part is really interesting because I think trying to force organizational structure, and Jerry and I have gone through this, because we've had situations where another organization needs to make a deal or needs to support OGM somehow. Mm -hmm. And Jerry and I went through lots of machinations about what does that mean. I think where I ended up was something like there should be an OGM foundation, which is kind of stewards the you know the fuzzy OGM thing, um, and maybe that's a way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so then right. you instantiate you know organizational structure in the fellow in the foundation, but trying to force all of that fuzzy thing of OGM into an organizational structure, I think is actually a it's a a, a failure mode. I, I think it's right. not the right thing to do. But Pete, I'm just remembering sure. the uh, vigorous how many OGMs are there conversations we had yep. back <laughs> year, and a, year and a half, two years yeah. ago. Okay, all this is convincing me OGM is the right thing to map to an hour. Love that. <laughs> because <laughs> it seems more like to be on the intersection, also some like uh, potentially aiming for like more than the some other parts. And uh, or the interlay level, as uh, uh, maybe uh, Samuel will put it, and that's I think pretty mapping pretty well by my mental model of what an agora is. Uh, so so, I, so think, I really love yeah. that. So what that says yeah. to me is that agora has an architecture that allows for this a, a fuzzy. You know, it doesn't have a, yes. a strict organizational structure. It allows exactly, yeah. it specifically allows kind of you know emergent you know and uh, multi multiplexed, uh, you know, thoughts of organization. So I like precisely, that a lot. precisely. Yeah. I mean, and, and this is way. I think this is what maximizes the chances. Hopefully, that it will actually be complementary to like all uh, um, a great number of other tools in the space. So it's trying to really like just like be in the cracks to some extent, mm -hmm. and like be this. Uh, or you know, also think of the big fungus. Right, like try to enable the wee fungus essentially. Or, or to gild the lily, like you lose something by saying OGM instead of open global mind. How many OGMs are there is like asking how many parts of the brain are there? 
how many neurons are there? How many connections are there between those neurons? And there you have your answer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's got to be like a Borges short story in here somewhere. Yes. <laughs> and if not, we will, we will write it away. <laughs> oh, by the way, we could just ask ChatGPT to pretend it's Jorge Luis Borges and write a, a short story about this theme yeah. and see what happens. That would be really super cool. And Francia, <laughs> you can even publish it in Buenos Aires. I, I, yeah, I'm a huge fan. Yes, I have the, the, a lot of his work here. Um, so the library of Babel, of, Babel, of yeah, course, like of course. influential. Also, the lot, also the lottery, lottery in Babylon. To some extent, uh, going back to the social component, mm -hmm. you know, like a homelessness in Portland. Uh, you know, and, also they, and the garden the, of the forking paths, also. Yes. So I always say that well, it's like it wants to be a garden of forking paths, precisely. Yeah. So you got that, yes. Wants to be, of course. The OGA map is not the tutorial, I like it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'll con just continue in the direction of OGM. Uh, I will, uh, and uh, there's it's, it's, it's already this, so I, I guess if you, if you want, I next time I could give a quick demo. That'd be great. Maybe that could, yeah, uh, if I get there. Uh, the other question is which other repos, which, uh, I mean, if you have any, I, uh, which other repos could be there? If you have ideas, just, uh, you know, uh, uh, PRs or just like recommendations, uh, uh, welcome. It seems like some of the flotilla, I don't know if flotilla has a wiki or it, uh, tools for thought map could also probably be there. So I'll just okay. keep adding whatever I find. But if you have any, uh, uh, in particular, you know, you're the, being the massive wiki, massive wiki. Uh, yes, uh, well, more than an expert. <laughs> uh, yes, just send them my way and I'll. Uh, nice. Um... So I've seen it looks at line eight, uh, Rally Wiki needs a dot git at the end. I wonder if that's. Um, it does, but I think it somehow works anyway. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it works anyway. Yeah, yeah, but just because it's a common mistake. Yeah, relate is been important apparently. But yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll fix it. Thank you for noticing that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So what does this set us up to do? What what do we want to do with what we're doing? Uh, I, I like Bentley's question and kind of also like, I'm not sure how, how to even think about this feeling. You know, <laughs> it's like, it would be, yeah, I, 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 I want to be set up to do whatever it's doing, but I'm not sure what that is. Um, I guess I, I, I'm, my mind went back to the Marley uh, book, or mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the right node for it, but yeah, uh, and you know, with this question, and I know I also like your, your comment about like how to collaborate essentially, uh, maybe cross wiki or cross wiki, if, uh, if I'm paraphrasing, yes, um, and maybe how that could work as an experiment. I mean, if we want to, I mean, I don't know if that will add extra complexity and not. I don't know if it's worth doing, but you know, it's one thing to collaborate us in Wiki. Maybe it's another to like say, maybe it's this chapter or this book in particular, let's try like forking the Wiki and the merging to some extent, no? Uh, to sort of like go to the, essentially one thing is to collaborate in one repo and the other is this more maybe complex qu uh, question of how to fork and the merge mm -hmm. text, right? Um, uh, for like more distributed collaboration. Right. Uh, Riley so also has yeah. the idea of modularity. Uh, so right. um, you have nuggets that could be, you know, decomposed from several books and recomposed into another book. Right. Nice. And and I think yeah. what Fontaine is saying, Pete, refers back to your conversations in uh, Flotilla or elsewhere about branching versus fork and pull, basically, like how close in to the center of a team you are depends on which method you're using for the collaboration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and branching and fork and pull are both all much more complicated than collaborative editing, Google Docs style, which is what people are accustomed to. So how to how to what the bridge is for muggles I, is um... I, for for what it's worth, Lansin. I I think Marley, especially in the context of 
OGM, whatever that is, whichever OGM it is. Um, in the context of OGM, Marley is going to, it's, it's um, brain bending enough for people to even be thinking about doing it in the wiki. So right. we don't advertise that part of it. What we advertise is you can write in whatever tool you want, like Google Docs. Fair. Right, right. Um, okay. And then, and then we'll have, mm -hmm. you know, back end tools that help us manage that. I, I, in some right. of the vision stuff, I even said Google Docs or, you know, pen and paper or whatever, because the, the, yeah. Yeah. the idea of Marley is to enable um, people who don't use information tools um, or don't use them very much to be fluent in, you know, uh, in the neo book space. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it, so I it's thank you for that. I think you you mentioning the Google Doc uh, input. I guess it reminds me. I mean, uh, of this idea of like maybe uh, collaborate at the level of like um, uh, yeah import. So essentially, yeah. you know, which source we can well, or this conversion how to some extent that we we may want yeah. to agree on. Yeah. Um, Cool. The, um, uh, by the way, uh, since we're right here, the thing that I have found that works well with Google Docs is to save as HTML, I think. Yeah, save as HTML mm -hmm. and then load that. I usually load it in Typora. Um, and that gets you pretty much all the way. So so save to HTML from Google it, Docs yeah. and then use a HTML to markdown converter. And then the leftover task is um google docs decorates all the links with a google.com prefix um and and you the url encode the the um the url url encode the uh, original url so you can't actually do a, a straight text substitution you have to trim off the google.com and then url decode the the link it's very straightforward but it's not Maybe it's the other way around, but it's, it's a, a little bit it's complicated, a necessary task. but it's, it's, um, it's very deterministic. I guess it's very deterministic, but it is a little bit convoluted um, and not, not very too many steps. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I also found uh, yeah, but uh, precisely agreeing on, on this pipeline essentially, and like trying yeah. to like deduplicate maybe it seems like, yeah, it's going to save effort for the commons essentially if what we want is like you know an x2 commons um like pipeline so right in this space as well david bovel um who is currently part of map of the future.org um he's had a vision for a year or two now of mashing up massive wiki and fed wiki and tiddly wiki um and yeah massive wiki to the wiki and what, what else fed wiki <laughs> perfect and and it helps me listen to david once in a while about that vision because if you think about it too much it's like they all are a little bit different in in ways that make them kind of incompatible but on the other hand you know fed wiki has the nice forking model and it also kind of understands html um a tiddly wiki well, the whole wiki is just an html a really big html block blob with some javascript um and it seems like there's he's he's got an intuition that there's something there that you could kind of mash them all together and get something that's mm -hmm. that's really interesting i'll have to drag him to one of these calls he's, he's probably been to one of these calls now that i think about it I'm not sure he's been on the the fellowship calls. I don't remember him being on one, but he might have. He's certainly um, been on Map, a bunch of Map of the Future is, is getting some um, traction under its feet. Um, they're having, they're doing um, multi-location, uh, part part virtual, part um, in in physical space, multi-location things like uh, I think it's Barcelona and Warsaw and London, and you know they they keep adding locations. Um, and they're having events and podcasting and keeping you massive wikis and other things. You broke up for a second there, Pete. What, which day is that you were referring to? Um, Mapofthefuture.org. Okay. Yeah. Is that, I, that idea of those three big wiki projects merging on some kind of standard that would allow them to interoperate would 
you know, that would just freak me out a little bit. It'd be <laughs> super cool. It would be, yeah. Uh... Or if you add, um, you know, media wiki to that as well, even better. But <laughs> I so the the other interesting part is that of those three, and they're they're kind of they're they've got some orthogonality to them in their their approach and their architecture. So, you know, they're they're not the same. So if you could kind of mash them up, it would be really cool. Um, uh, the the founders of each of those communities, uh, me and Ward and um, uh, Jeremy, yeah. uh, are all friendly and interested in that kind of stuff and easy to talk to and things like that. So the, it, it, it seems like, you know, socially, you could kind of get some, some activity going too. Because I, I have versions of think of all three of them sitting around in various instantiations and Yep. Being able to push one button and have them all like viewable in all those spaces would be just awesome. It would be really cool. Um, Michael, we we kind of um, we kind of overtook the sense doing project and turned it into the book writing project as Marley. Uh, the nomenclature may change around, but we're still still having those calls and uh, heading back into it. And the book in question right now, the first quick, the quick first book that we're envisioning is about regenerative agriculture or related issues, uh, and it's called um, Food Revolt, as opposed to Revolting Food, which would be a very different book. And and to put a finer point on it, it it's it seems like it's going to be about bio 